Let's solve these three problems, where we will test each series for convergence or divergence using the limit comparison test. Here is the statement of the limit comparison test if you need a review. Instead of the comparison test, where we compare the terms of two series directly, in the limit comparison test, which also applies only to series with positive terms, for the limit comparison test, we look at the limit of the ratio of the terms of two series. And if that limit is some positive finite number, we know that the behavior of the two series must be the same. They must both converge or they must both diverge. If, for example, the sum of the ANs was divergent, but the sum of the BNs was convergent, there's no way the limit of their ratios could approach a finite number. I'll leave a link in the description to my video introducing this test for the first time. Let's go ahead and practice applying it. First, let's test this series, the sum of the terms 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. At a glance, this is a series where you might want to try the comparison test, comparing these terms to 1 over 2 to the n. 1 over 2 to the n, if we take the sum, is a convergent geometric series, so we see the comparison test actually isn't useful here, because we suppose this is convergent, so we would need it to be smaller than a convergent series that we compare it to, but in fact the terms of this series are bigger because the denominator is just a little bit smaller. So the typical comparison test doesn't work here, but the limit comparison test using this same series, 1 over 2 to the n, is going to work perfectly. So we will use the limit comparison test with a n equal to the terms of our series, and for b n, we will try the geometric series 1 over 2 to the n, which we know to converge. Now we're going to look at the limit of the ratio of their terms. So the limit is n goes to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 over 1 over 2 to the n. I should mention also that both of these series that we are using are series with positive terms, so the limit comparison test certainly applies. Now coming back to this limit, we are just taking this fraction and dividing by this fraction, so multiply by the reciprocal. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n minus 1. Then, dividing the numerator and denominator by 2 to the n, this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. Again, all we did was divide the numerator by 2 to the n and divide the denominator by 2 to the n to make that simplification. Now, this limit is very easy to evaluate. It is clearly 1 because it's 1 over 1, and in the denominator, we're subtracting something which clearly goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So this is just approaching 1 over 1, which is 1. That is a finite number that is positive, and so we can conclude that the series must have the same behavior. Since the geometric series 1 over 2 to the n that we used for the comparison converges, so too does the series we were investigating, the sum of the terms 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. That converges also. Next, let's test this series for convergence or divergence, the sum of the terms n plus 1 over n root n. Looking at this series, you should notice that the numerator is very close to n, and if we just pretended that it was n, then it would cancel out with the denominator, leaving us just 1 over root n. So let's perhaps try using 1 over root n for our comparison. 1 over root n is a p series with p equal to 1 half, and so this series diverges. And again, both of these series we're considering are made up of positive terms. So, using the limit comparison test, with a n equal to the terms of our series, and b n equal to this very similar series, 1 over root n, we'll now look at the limit of the ratio of the terms of these two series. So there's a n in the numerator, and there's b n in the denominator. Again, we are dividing by a fraction, so just multiply by the reciprocal. The root n comes up top. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of root n times n plus 1 divided by n times root n. Great. Now, those root n's are going to cancel out. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity 
of n plus 1 over n, which is certainly equal to 1. We could once again divide the top by n and the bottom by n if you find it helpful to make that intermediate step, but clearly this is approaching 1. As n goes to infinity, the difference between n plus 1 and n is negligible. Once again, this limit is a finite positive number, so we can conclude that the series must have the same behavior. Since the series 1 over root n, a p-series with p equal to 1 half, diverges, so too does our series. One more example, let's test this series, the sum of the terms sine of 1 over n, for convergence or divergence. First, I'll point out that, again, the terms of this series are positive. We know that because the first term is sine of 1, and 1 is less than pi over 2, so it's not moving into the area where sine is negative. 1 is less than pi over 2. So that first term is definitely going to be positive. And from there, this input, 1 over n, is just going to approach 0 from the right, where sine is still positive that whole time. So terms are positive. Let's consider the limit comparison test. Looking at this series, we've got 1 over n in the sine function. We know that 1 over n is going to be approaching 0, so sine of 1 over n will also be approaching 0. And we may begin to think about the harmonic series, because 1 over n, of course, is the input of sine. These terms approach 0 in a similar way. This series we know to diverge. Let's try using it for the limit comparison test. So we'll use the limit comparison test with our terms from our series as a n and the harmonic series as the terms b n. Then look at the limit of the ratio of their terms. The limit is n goes to infinity of sine of 1 over n over 1 over n. At this point, you should start to think about the fundamental trig limit sine x over x as x approaches 0. We know that this approaches 1, and that's exactly what we have going on here. We have sine of a thing divided by that thing as the thing approaches 0, because the thing is 1 over n. But n is going to infinity. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n approaches 0 from the right. So this is the same as the limit of sine of 1 over n over 1 over n as 1 over n approaches 0 from the right. And we know that sine of a thing over the thing as the thing approaches 0, that's equal to 1. If you didn't recall that, you could use Lapetal's rule to finish evaluating this limit. But again, we have a finite limit which is positive, and so the behavior of the series must be the same. Since the harmonic series diverges, so too does the sum of the terms sine of 1 over n. Those are three nice examples from Stewart's calculus of using the limit comparison test to classify a series as convergent or divergent.